Hey everybody, this is Cedric from 3D Bandit and today I'll be showing you a cool procedural way to make a grease slash dirt slash anything you want texture actually, which looks realistic. Which actually looks, uh, which doesn't look like procedural and adds some really cool visual interest in a subtle way. And which adds a lot of realism to your uh, objects and scenes. So yeah, this has this texture has some uh, different appliances, like uh, it can be used on this. It's kind of a concrete thing. We have this as our kitchen floor. Um, can also be used on glass to get a lot of realism on the glass, and can also be used on chrome. I think I like the chrome appliance most because. It still gives the hard edges. You can see the hard uh, like lights here, hard uh, light edges, but it doesn't give away the reflection. Like uh, it distorts the reflection a lot in a very interesting way. Um, the details have hard edges. They have soft edges. They transition, um, and it gives a lot of visual interest, which is very important if you want to make an interesting scene. So, how do we do this? Well, let's jump right into it. It's actually pretty easy. So, I have a basic scene set up here. Um, uh, just a sphere with an HDRI. And I have like, uh, yeah, basic node set up. You all noticed the Fresnel with the glossy reflection and the diffuse color. Uh, yeah, I know. Uh, <laughs> and, uh, yeah. I'll show you how to make the uh, dirt texture. It's actually pretty easy. I found this whilst experimenting with uh, a lot of the textures and I actually just uh, need the noise texture for this, which I'm usually not a big fan of because it has a lot of soft edges. If you look at the factor here and soft edges, usually the only thing this sells uh, as being realistic is smoke and even then it's to yeah the only thing you can use like the noise texture in its most basic form if if you really put up the scale uh, it gets too small to see the uh, details in it and then it becomes like interesting again to use but usually I'm not a big fan of this but whilst experimenting I find that you can use the separate HSV, which is which will separate uh, a texture in hue, saturation, and value. You should pop on the color in this and preview the hue. You get this very interesting pattern, uh, which is really cool. So uh, it has a lot of hard edges, it has soft edges, and it looks like something that could be in the real world, like this can be used as a basis to get very subtle and realistic textures. So, how do we use this properly? Um, I don't want to use this in its raw form, like I don't, I don't want to pop this into the roughness. Because uh, you know, that just gives some strange results. It, it gets some very hard lines here, which is very weird. Uh, some very straight lines which looks very unrealistic it it has some very abrupt endings to some color values and uh, we don't want that so we're actually going to use this with another noise texture and uh we're going to use this as the vector well we're gonna what's happening outside somebody destroying a building oh well anyway so <laughs> uh where was i yeah so we're gonna bring in the mapping and the texture coordinate nodes with Ctrl T if you have the node wrangler enabled, and um, we're gonna mix the mapping and the hue of this, so we get like a mixed uh, normal. And we're gonna put the value to 0.9, something like this, and we're gonna pop the color in this vector. Move this. So now we get. A very interesting, if you look at the value, a very interesting influenced uh, noise texture. I think we can put the scale of this down a bit. Yeah, and this looks already way more interesting. Um, the lines have disappeared. Uh, I can see here a little artifact. I think we can do this by. Uh, it's gonna stay there. 
something weird with the noise texture generation. But it's not really seeable. But you can see by just using two noise textures, you get this really interesting pattern. Um, it distorts in a very interesting way. You get like hard edges, you get like smudges. Uh, this is actually mirrored. That's weird. Huh. Yeah, I don't know how the noise generation works, but uh, anyway, you get this very interesting. And it can be used uh, like as stuff. Like the, the most basic thing is, of course, uh, you can. Uh, uh, well, use the factor as a mix, and I can, for instance, use this red and pop this in a diffuse to get like a little bit more color variation in my red, which looks really cool. I also can use this, and this is one of my favorite. If I just preview the glossy and go to color ramp, put the factor in here, I put this in the roughness. I can get some variation in the roughness, which looks already really cool. And you can um, like put this value darker if you want to have more reflections. Here you go. And this looks already. Yeah, this looks a little bit too less contrast, but we can. Like if you preview this, you can get these two values closer to each other. Oh, not that close. I should preview it then. Yeah, we get some more interesting. Uh, actually, infer these two. Oh, oh, yeah, like this. And you get some more interesting. Also, you don't want to use black because black is like no roughness and it's also not very realistic. So, yeah, you get this very cool variation in the, uh, in the roughness. Of course, you can use a combination of this, and it already looks a little bit more visually interesting. Bear in mind, you want to have uh, a little bit of more render time, uh, some more render values to actually get. But you can already see uh, in the reflection here that it has some interesting results. And you can see the details here. It's very subtle and it's very nice. So, um, if you want to have the chrome look, you can uh, simply, yeah, use this. But I find a, a small way where you can use the noise texture to actually improve even more. That's why we use the bump map. If I put the factor in the height and I check the bump, this is way too hard. So I want to put the value down to 0 0.03. That's really low, and you can almost not see it. But if I put this in the Fresnel, you will, yeah, you, you, suddenly you can see this very interesting super interesting actually a detail like it has some hard it has some soft edge, it has some variation in it and if we use this normal on a diffuse and glossy as well if you just preview the glossy you suddenly get this very cool reflection i might though want to scale it scale both values up a bit to uh, make it even smaller and this might even be too big i might put this down on 0 0.01 even yeah so as you can see, it suddenly has a very cool effect. Uh, it has some dirt here, it has some reflection. Um, yeah, you can experiment with this. I mean, I'll put it up to three. Hmm. Maybe put up the detail. Maybe some distortion. Oh, and it also looks cool. Yeah. So as you can see, you can experiment more with it. This is just one of the appliances. If I put on the entire shader, you can see this only oh, looks so much cooler. I might make this a little less contrasty. But this suddenly looks way more visually interesting than uh, what we had before. So uh, yeah, this is a very simple trick. Um, I'm trying to this out for a second. Oh, well, that's not high enough. Let's get to render settings to 300. Okay. So it's a very uh, simple way to get realism in your scene. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> it was a very fast tutorial. Very cool trick. And 
very simple trick and you can see it has some very cool results it looks it looks very cool it looks very realistic this is well i mean yeah you can improve the realism of objects just by having two noise textures interact with each other so yeah i hope you have fun with this um and uh like and subscribe for more also, leave a comment down below uh, if you want to have a tutorial on something specific. Um, you're also almost reaching 1,000 subscribers, which is awesome. Um, <laughs> I want to thank you guys uh, again for the support. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And uh, I'll see you next time. Yay! Uh, oh.